Welcome to Health Oddity, the show that strips away the jargon and hype surrounding all things health and fitness to help you live a long, strong and energetic life. Lining up at the bar this week, here's Peter Lant, Paul Bassett and James St. Pierre. Hello and welcome to the Health Oddity podcast, episode 118. Uh, you have the pleasure today of the company, well, it's a dubious pleasure, the pleasure of the company of the three usual uh, hosts of uh, Health Oddity. We are taking a, a breather episode, a kind of a consolidation episode to catch up uh, with ourselves and with the recent guests that we've had on uh, and just have some discussions really around what's been going on with us, what we've taken from the recent guests, um, what's going on with training, what's going on with uh with life in the gym and with our businesses and uh, and what we're working on ourselves. Um, recently, I'll just before we before we introduce uh, each other, uh, the recent podcast since our last breather episode, we've had uh, Donna Moore on, we've had um, Megan Calloway, we've had Adam Meekins, and we've had uh, Vicky Corsa. And I know that in the, for the next few weeks lined up, we have other great guests. So we thought we'd take this opportunity uh, to kind of, uh, like I say, have a bit of a breather episode and talk amongst ourselves before going into our next uh, run of guests. So first of all, uh, Mr. Peter Lant, how are you doing today? Um, I'm doing very well. I'm doing very well. I'm actually very focused and very busy at the minute, which is a bit, it's a bit strange for me. <laughs> yeah. Doing the doing a lot of stepping out of my comfort zone at the minute, which is kind of I haven't done that for a while. Um, like in in it's more in a business sense than in in training. I've, I've been, I mean I've been doing it in training, especially since I've been working with Paul. But um, yeah, I've, I'm kind of doing it in business now, and it's 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 interesting to say the least. Mm. But it's good though because it's given me it's funny because it's given me focus on on what I need to do. So every day I'm like I need to do this. I need to do this. Whereas for the last I don't know, a couple, like year and a half or so. I've been like, I've been enjoying walking the dog and all that, and I still do. But in between that, I've been like, oh, isn't this lovely? I've got time for myself and everything. And then actually, it's funny because I put a post up about it the other day. And when you get into that comfort, you're like, right, I'm I'm bored of this now. I need I need something to replace that comfort. So I'm, uh, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting couple of weeks. Put it that way. Oh, well, maybe when we can, uh, once we get going, you can kind of give us an update. I know certainly from your social media, you're a lot more, uh, well, it just seems that things are, folk, like you say, things are focusing towards a point now, you know, and you're, and you're kind of, uh, obviously, I know you're, you're learning and studying yourself and you're running Facebook groups and you're kind of look, yeah. you know, moving into different areas, which would be really good. We can maybe discuss that. Um, I apologise in advance, but basically I've stopped throwing shit at the wall and seeing what sticks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Mr. Paul Bassett in Putney in London, how are you doing? Okay, I was about to say to Pete, if you wanted, if you wanted some additional discomfort, I've got plenty here. You could have just asked me. Would have given it <laughs> yeah, have some of mine. Yeah, the have problem some of shared this, is yeah. a problem. Exactly, involved. exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Two minds. Uh, no, I'm I'm fine. I've I've got a lot of, a lot a lot of exciting things brewing, a mm. um, lot of exciting things brewing. So um, that means a lot of my time is taken up, uh, just like Peter, just kind of um, putting myself in that uncomfortable place, making decisions, and you know, uh, which I'll be able to tell people about in a bit. But um, not now, not, not, today. not today. Oh, it's top secret, is it? Oh, yeah, very secret. Yeah, yes, yeah. <laughs> On a need to know basis, I, I, you know, it, most trainers like to elevate their, um, their, their kind of stature by saying they work with uh, special forces. Um, so I'm trying to kind of elevate that mystique about about me and what we do. Um, so you're training mystique. Yeah, I am. From, yeah, I know exactly. From X, making a comeback. the X Men villain thing. Yeah. That no, woman. no, no, the, the band from the 90s. I was thinking the band from oh, the Oh, right, the band from, all oh, right, but well, all of them, Dixon. that's three of them, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. There, was three, there was three of them, wasn't there? Well, you know, they needed a choreographer and the, I was <laughs> top of the list. <laughs> well, why is it oh, not? Excellent. What about well, you, um, James? Well, we're, uh, yeah, this, this coming weekend, um, I'm doing a bit of a refurb at Unique Results, so we're shutting um, Friday and Saturday. Uh, we're kind of, laying lots of new floor assembling lots of new kit kind of changing the what layout that? what's that why 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 
Because you've got such a nice space already. It looks like it's immaculate already. Uh, yes, but we are, we're just kind of freshening up, I suppose, um, making some changes. There's a couple of reasons kind of that are probably a bit boring for the podcast, but to just make more of the space more um, usable at all times for personal yeah. training and things. We find that, that a lot of the trainers kind of seem to congregate in one area because that's where most of the kind of kit they want to use is. Mm. So we're kind of making more use of all the space so that people naturally kind of spread out and have more room to work, you know? I've got a, su- I've got a suggestion have... suggestion for you, for, yeah. your, for your business. Yeah. Wedge as yeah. much kit in there as you can, loads of it, and get as many people in there as you can and play the music really loudly, close all the windows, shut all the doors. <laughs> have you been to, uh, have you been to uh, the uh, Physical Culture Gym in Putney, which has been there since 1929? It basically... It's a brilliant gym, but it's it it literally is nowhere to well. I haven't been there for about a year or so, but uh, there's just nowhere to move because they just accumulated since 1929. Literally every piece of gear, um, and so it's just like rammed. I mean, it got some fancy, amazing stuff in there, but it's it's under some arches, so there's no windows, nothing. It's just like gear. But I mean, I I, I don't know about you, but how many how many trainers have this idea? It's like I'm going to set up a coffee bar or a restaurant in the gym. And you use all that space. You think everyone's going to sit around and have a coffee after it. And we can all have a chat. But actually, in reality, they all just go, right, finish. Got to get to work straight away. Bang, straight out. And you've got this coffee bar that's sitting around doing nothing. You spent £3,000 on a coffee machine. Um, I remember when I worked in a gym when I first started. They had a, um, they, they, I mean, God bless them. They were lovely. Uh, and they had great aspirations. But, but they spent hundreds, of, well, at least 100 grand on, on like this amazing, immaculate kitchen. To, to, to cook food for bodybuilders because knowing it's like they're going to train in this gym and they're going to want to look amazing and they're going to need food because bodybuilders need very specific macros and i understand macros but i can also cook so we're going to combine the two and it's going to be a great revenue source but it just people didn't do it didn't use it so they had this huge space that was just like beautiful that never got used you know because it's two separate businesses you know you've just gave me a great idea and i'm just thinking of rocky so just having a bunch of steaks hanging around, James, yeah. is, James is dream, right? <laughs> James, this, this, you're going to see this and James is going to be like, right, I've, I've changed my idea. So just have a bunch of steaks hanging around and people can like hit them and stuff like that, lift them, drop them, smash yeah. them and all that, tenderize them. And then you can have the kitchen next door where you can like cook them up and eat them or just, just, just eat yeah. them raw. Well, he's got all the, you know all, I mean? the uh, all the meals and the maces and the, yeah, you know, yeah, instead of hammering a tire, you whack the steak as hard. Like, honestly, be like, it'll be melting in your mouth. It'll be What's lovely. this course you're doing again, Peter? <laughs> <laughs> is it butchery yeah. and personal training in one? Yeah, basically, yeah. <laughs> Which is generally yeah, so, like the workouts I give my clients. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're actually, we're not just accumulating more kit. We're actually selling, bit, I've sold a few bits off, you know, to members to have in like garage gyms and home gym. You know what I mean? people have got set ups at home and things. So we're actually probably going to end up with more space, more kind of flowable space and usable space, you know, but the racks and things and kettlebells are going to be more spread out. So, so that's going to be good. And I need to make room for my mold, my mold wine urn as well, which is yeah. going to come out in a couple of weeks. I've so, had another, yeah. and honestly, I'm full of ideas today. I've had a great idea as well. Feng Shui for gyms. Because you get it for how you get like designers for houses and that, right? Get it for gyms. You know, the the perfect, I suppose that's what like Dragon's gym. Den. Dragon's Den it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. I'm, I'm on I'm, I'm trying on to fire sell a half rack. I'll tell you. <laughs> and before we, before we say go, I'm trying to sell a half rack. So, you know, we don't I know we make millions from this podcast, before but before we go too money. far down this uh this this rabbit hole. Uh, I want to um, just say a couple of well done's or, or congratulations to uh, guests uh, of the show. First of all, um, Donna Moore, who we had on a few weeks back, has been out in Florida on the official Strongman Games, and she came third in the under twenty under under eighty two kilos category. It was her first time competing uh, in a in a weight class. I think she said she was, there was a couple of um, uh, you know, learning experiences, if you like, mistakes whereby she could have probably possibly placed higher, I think. Um, but she she came third, which is fantastic. 
And um, this weekend, going out to Belgium, three former guests on the show, uh, Finbar Toulan, Lauren Emery and Ben Morris are all heading out to uh, Belgium for the Kettlebell Sport World Championships. And I think they're all doing the, the pentathlon, aren't they? Uh, so we've got um, Finbar, who's obviously kind of out there leading uh, the Irish team and uh, and Lauren and Ben are out there with the English team. So, um, so that's going to be good. So we wish them all the best uh, for this weekend. And I'm sure we'll be able to update you on the next episode with uh, with how everyone how everyone did so uh and you obviously paul did your first foray into kettlebell sport recently didn't you which we spoke about i think last week or the week before yeah yeah which was yeah. fun which is great which yeah. i'll give me the give me the uh, thirst to do it again um i it told me where i need to work on what i need to work on anyway which is plenty excellent, <laughs> excellent. It should take longer so, than uh, what i don't need to work on <laughs> So, Pete, what's going on with you then? What's this? What's what? What's caused this uh, recent uh, focus, or what is this recent focus that you've that you've that you've found or decided to uh, to work on? Well, I just, I just, I've not really made a realization. I've known it for a long time, but like, it's it's one of those things about like trying to get people. I wrote a post about it the other day, trying to get people to do something and pay you for something that they don't particularly want to do, is really hard, and we know this, right? So I said about, um, you know, people think it's like, I'm, I'm generalizing here, but this, this is, these are the thoughts that I have. And it's kind of like people think it's easy for personal trainers or gym owners or whatever, because you do it for a living. So therefore it's easy to keep in shape and all of that, which, which it isn't, right? <laughs> frankly, it isn't. And I, I was saying about, um, you know, for me, you know, I ended up losing my job and um, changing career completely when I was like 37. So feeling totally insecure doing that, um, you know, my marriage ended be not because of that, but like it didn't, it didn't, it didn't help it put it that way, um, because I was so insecure and I didn't know what I was doing, and you know, and it's kind of it's been a long old journey to get through that, and to get to the point where you build the confidence in you enough in yourself to be able to, you know, doing things like this, you know, we just started out on a whim, didn't we? And we've got 100, 118 episodes in. We've been doing it for over well, two I saw years. that video you did. Yeah, it was, you put up one of your first videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I didn't even recognize, I mean, I kind of recognized you, but in terms of the way you spoke and your manner. Oh, it was awful. Like night and day. I'm like, who, who is this guy? Yeah, there's a video of me very gaunt. I think I was like nine and a half stone or something. And, it was ridiculous. And I was so thin and like my eyes were just black and dead and, and I'm talking away and you can see, I've just like, I've, I've, I've just, I'm not, I don't believe what I say. So it's, I've just been realizing this and it's kind of like, so it's, and, and, and I'm, I don't know what word to use for it. Cause I don't like mindset, but it's kind of like people, the, the whole thing about like trying to get people to, to, to lose weight or get stronger or change their habits and behaviors and stuff like that. Isn't just doing the thing. So the amount of people who are out there saying like, you know, eat, eat less and move. I was going to say eat more, move less, eat less and move more. You know, that's all well and good. And I've put stuff out in the past and people have commented on it. Just buy yourself a pair of trainers and go for a run. It's that simple. It's like, it's not though, is it? Because everyone's in their own heads and it, it's only, it's, it, it only gets worse because there's just an information overload, which was one of the reasons why we started doing this podcast. And I was speaking to someone today actually on, on messenger who, who got in touch with me. Um, who's been in touch with me previously and, and they bought a kettlebell because of this podcast and they've been doing that, but then they haven't, and they've been, you know, listening to what we're saying and taking it on board, which feels really great that people are actually doing that and getting the feedback from that as well. But this person's kind of, but I've fallen off the wagon, you know? So it's like, right. So we're going to, we're going to have a chat about it and stuff like that, but it's what's really good. Um, well, oh, oh, sorry, but the realization I've made or, the, or that's been bubbling up for ages, but I'm like, right, this is what I need to work on, which is why I created a new group around it as well, is just people talking about it and getting, and actually getting the help of what behavior change actually is and what it takes and creating new habits. Because you can tell people till you're blue in the face, that's a thing my dad used to say, but you can tell people um, over and over and over and over again, and people know it and people know what to do. And all of the information is there. We're in the information age. All of the information is there. If you want to know anything, you can go and find it out. Applying it is the difference and taking action. And that's where people struggle. Um, 
and you know, and I've got guys who I train and I see three times a week um, who are still struggling because I only see them for three hours a week. And it's in a, sometimes it's in a, it's not in a large group setting, but it's in a group setting. So sometimes they don't talk about what they want to talk about. or don't ask the question or whatever. So I've just created this extra bit, which helps me because it makes me a better coach, but it helps them because then they get a chance. It's a bit, uh, it's online like this. And we have a chat um, about the goal and about the behavior change. And there's, there's, there's educational material with it and the steps to it and all of that. But it's just kind of that extra little bit that people need, I think, especially because most of the people I speak to don't even think. They just turn up to a session, do what I tell them, and then leave. And then they don't think about anything else because they're, in, they're into work and they're, they've got kids. And, you know, it's just, it's just manic and it's just, it's just a, a constant bombardment of, of thoughts and, mm. and stuff. And there was a stat I saw, which was kind of like 80% of the thoughts that we have are negative if we, if we let our brains just run, run amok. So, which, which doesn't help anybody, does it? So it's kind of like how to break that cycle, yeah, bring I it think, forwards um, and build up energy and then be, and then, and then want to change, you know, and I've had some really deep conversations with people about this over the last, over the last few weeks, um, which is why I've basically, that's why everything on social media has all come into, into one little bit. It, and it all looks the same across all of it now, because it's like, this is what people need uh, are struggling with. You know, so it's mm. been like a deep dive into that, and it's been it's been tiring, but it's been really rewarding because I've learned a hell of a lot. It's it's learning a lot, but it's also putting together together everything I've been thinking for the last kind of eight years of everything that I've been through as well. And it's like, right, it's time to it's time to move it on because I think the you know the the, the fitness industry is quite funny because it is you know it's it's available and it's there and everybody's got access to it at different price points and all of that sort of stuff. But they're still, we're still having problems with, you know, with obesity and diabetes and the people, people who have had on have talked about it. And then, you know, we were talking about earlier about menopause for, for ladies, obviously, and stuff like that. And we'll have a guy on talking about testosterone, hopefully, um, at some point who I'm in touch with at the moment. Um, because, you know, there's low testosterone in men um, these days, but I think which is a big, st- which is a big problem. So just lots of all this other stuff that people don't really understand and even if you look up the information on it you're not going to understand it you know what i mean or you you if you want to you've got to put a lot a lot of time into it so it's actually having someone to guide you through it the big question though is often as a trainer because you can have two people who do the same thing and one gets one person comes out of that with a great sense of optimism and achievement and then another person's gone through exactly the same training program exactly the same coaching classes and and the same approach and they have and, th- and they get something completely different, which is the opposite, which is it reinforces how hard things are and everything. And I, I remember listening to, I'm trying to remember where I heard it, the distinction between discomfort and suffering. Yeah. Because we all know changes. I mean, you said it right at the beginning, Peter, you know, I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone. So you know that change happens when you go become uncomfortable. Absolutely. Um, and it has to, and everyone knows that, you know, it's uncomfortable to put yourself in a situation to learn a new language, go to a different country and try and talk to the locals and realize you sound like an idiot, but you learn from it and you become better and more fluent and eventually become fluent in the language. Um, so we know that discomfort is part of the check process of change. However, some people seem to experience discomfort as suffering. Mm. I'm trying to remember where I heard this from, so I don't want to misquote. So someone's going, yeah, I know what you're talking about, Paul, but but, but what they're doing is they're linking something else to that discomfort that the output is now suffering. I think if they, if I remind, remember rightly, it was that person's adding resistance to discomfort, yep. adding anxiety, bringing part of uh, a narrative to that discomfort, which is then like a combination, like two chemicals meeting, creating something carcinogenic as opposed to something that's just discomfort and just struggle. Mm. You know, and so they come out of it interpreting like, like we get on the A12 quite a lot. You know, some person will come out going, like, my body's changing. I'm going everywhere. This is brilliant. I'm, you know, this is tough. This is tough, but I'm loving it. And someone else will just come in and just tell you everything that is wrong about. And so it, I think, and it's just because there's something, there's a narrative mixed in with that that has turned that discomfort into something carcinogenic. And I think yes. it's difficult as trainers knowing 
who's going to be that person and if we can nip it at the bud straight away or if there's a way of dispelling that sense of suffering before it becomes worse and then they end up leaving saying it didn't work for me and then it just becomes another catalogue of reasons why they didn't see change. That is precisely why I'm doing this. For, because there are some people who'll come in, start exercise, and then they'll just they'll they'll go on with it, and it'll be fine. It'll be great, and they'll love it. Um, or they'll grow to love it, like you've just said, and they'll they'll feel a change in the right. Do you know what? This feels great. I'm going to keep doing this. But there's people who will find, um, who will find problems with everything. But that's not the problem with the thing, because it's obviously worked for other people. It's the problem. It's in the, it's in their own head, isn't it? So. I wasn't going to talk about this, actually, but I've just thought about this because we talked about values ages ago, um, didn't we? About, like, you know, mine were humility, curiosity, and, and integrity. But it's funny because those are values, but those are kind of values that everyone should have, I think. So I've started, I've, I've been rethinking this, and I've got five now, and they're all completely different to that. And one of them alludes to what Paul has just said about um, t- two different people can come in and get completely different results doing exactly the same program. because. I mean, for a fitness program, fair enough. It's it's kind of like, and it, well, actually, they don't do exactly the same thing. They do a thing at the at the level that they're at to get them to where they want to be, away from where they are now. So my I've got five values now, and they're all they're, they can all be massively expanded upon rather than just what is integrity kind of thing. And it's like, well, it's what you do when no one's looking, right? And you know, what's curiosity? It's just asking lots of questions and and all of that. And you can expand on that. But my five now. Are number one is know yourself because unless you know you're that person who finds fault in everything, because people people don't necessarily know that they're doing that, they just do it anyway because you're, you're on autopilot. 95% of what you uh, of your life is is ruled by your unconscious, isn't it? So you've got to you've got to drill down into that and find out how you actually speak to yourself, what you're saying, why you why you're showing up like that. So it's know yourself is number one. Be consistent is number two, because you just have to, you know, do it over and over and over again consistently. Um, for me, so this this is based on what I'm doing is community, and that doesn't just mean a bunch of people who all do what, like the thing together. It's like a bunch of people who chat, get to know each other, help each other out, because everyone everyone's had similar experiences and no one's on their own. And a lot of people are out there thinking, like, I've got all these thoughts, feelings, um, I can't do it because of this, and it's only me. And it's like, no, there's that's everybody. Some people have dealt with it, some haven't. Some are dealing with it, some don't want to deal with it, so they're not even ready. It's it's just the way it is. Um, and then number four is make it your own, which is exactly um, that thing of you turn up, you do, you, two people are doing similar things, and they get very different results because one's committed to it and the other one hasn't really. So it's like, well, maybe you're not, maybe it doesn't fit your schedule enough. Like, say, say, like let's take the A12 for example. It's a very involved program, so maybe they don't need an involved program. Maybe they just need to get started and fit in half an hour a, a week or a, a three times a week or whatever. So it's like make it your own, and then what happens then is they start to, the the person then starts to realize actually this is me doing this for me in my time that I have. Then that then that time starts to expand because like I've found something I enjoy doing and I'm going to move ahead with it. So then you can start to say right, well if you want to be more involved, we can up it to an hour three times a week or whatever, and and we can work that out. So that's what I do on the the kind of mindset side of it as well. I've, there's a there's a system to use, but it's like I'm not telling you how to use it because I've had a couple of guys on it who say. Oh well, I've done something similar before, and it was like, oh, you've got to, you've got to write this, you've got to journal it at night, and then you've got to do this thing when you first get up in the morning. But I've got to take the kids to school, and I haven't got time to do it then. Or at night, I'm too tired, and I'm like, it doesn't matter. You fit it into your life and do it whenever you like. Make it your own because one system does not fit everybody. But what you, you can't make a decision it, what... that it's not going to work straight away. You can't just say, so have you decided that this isn't going to work? Ex- well, yeah, it's exactly. Gone. You know? But what? But but one system can't fit, so they have to fit it into their lives, right? So that's kind of that. And then the last one is communication, because um, unless you're communicating what you're doing, how you're feeling, um, you know, constantly, things 
exacerbate things get blow out of proportion don't they so it's like nip it that's basically nip it in the bud and i said that on simon marion's podcast when i was on there it's like nip it in the bud if something's bubbling up and you can feel it just it, that, that's why we have like group discussions and stuff like that it's like just tell us because if you come in and say i've fallen off the wagon everything's screwed i'm i'm knackered i can't this I, this i can't cope with this i think um mark bennett talked about this as well I can't cope with this. It's like, right, okay, what well, what's happened there then? I, oh, it's it's because of this thing that happened like th- five weeks ago or three months ago. It's like communication is key. Why didn't you say if you'd have said if you'd have told us that five months ago, would have dealt with it, would have helped, you know, would have kind of found a way through it, sort of thing. But when people hold things in, it it bubbles up. So you think those are someone- those are the things that I've been that I've been looking at, and that's what I've been doing. That's that's why I've been so busy, and that's what I've been kind of formulating with with help from a, a um a, like a mastermind group that I'm in, um, which helps people like me who helps coaches build their business. But the big part of that is usually. You can you, you can do it. You know how to do it. You're just in your own way because your mindset's getting in the way. That's the whole thing. So it's like, how can I coach someone if I'm getting in my own way doing these things and not be, not putting myself out of my comfort zone and not being that person? How can I tell that person to go and put themselves out of their comfort zone and do these things? Even though on the the fitness side and the and, and what have you on that side, I've done that, but now I've got to go and do it on this side and be the example. So that's kind of a, a potted version of it there's loads more to it than that but that's been that's been what i've been working on and i just think it's it's the way it's the way i want to go because of just how much confusion is there that there is out there and it's only getting well not going to say worse but it's it's there's only more things that you can know or more studies or more of this and more of that and people just don't know where to start and are paralyzed so it's like just get started and then and then you can figure it out you know Hmm. Anyway, see you later. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that was episode 119. We'll see you next Sorry, time. you asked. <laughs> I think me and Paul were just sat there wondering who was going to say something. That's all. It wasn't like we weren't. We I was weren't waiting sure. for the BBC automatic uh, thing to kick in. <laughs> You are listening to BBC Two. Yeah, we weren't shell shocked. We were just both sitting here, and I was looking at Paul, thinking, "Are you going to say something, or am I going to say something?" That's all. There you go. No, it's it's just. No, I, I think, think it, I, I'm not on the side of this. So, so say now, like, like say Paul's talk to us about how he, he how you your consultant, um, a consultancy process. Yes, I suppose your initial consultation, and you want to get a commitment out of the person because your program is very involved and it costs a lot of money and all that, which is you know, which is fine. But sometimes you get that commitment and you've said it yourself haven't you You get that commitment but then halfway through they're like well actually i didn't know it was going to be like this or you know so they've kind of it's it's it, it, well, i've changed well, my language recently with those things yeah yeah because 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 actually now i'm trying to put people off <laughs> well yeah is, dis- it, is it working <laughs> yeah <not really> that <laughs> it. basically you and see, smile and they walk out the door you see that room he's, you see well. that room he's in <laughs> that room he's in right now that's his new flat yeah. <laughs> work with my wife and kids as well it's amazing <laughs> no no it's because there's more reasons why they shouldn't work with me really yeah, yeah. there's loads of reasons because they're going to come up with those excuses anyway yeah. so it's like okay well why do you think that i can help you and why should i help you is essentially because because whatever program i mean typically you'll sit down with someone and it will you you're you know, essentially what you're trying to sell is actually a solution to the problem. And you know, from your years of experience, if someone does what you say, then they've got a fantastic chance of not only achieving their goals, but potentially exceeding them. Now, there are chances where your techniques don't quite click with someone. Of course, that's, that happens. But but you have great belief. You built a business. The bills, the business exists already. So the question then becomes is, why should I work with you? Because there's a reason why you you could do this program on your own. Why don't you why don't you just train yourself? Because it's going to be cheaper. Why don't you why don't you just have your friends as accountability partners? You know why don't you just go on YouTube? Um, why don't you just get a nutrition program off Google? Like why are you going to work with us? Why are you going to do our program? Because oh, I want to. You know, and then you get them to start thinking about like all the reasons why they shouldn't work with you, and then maybe actually they do need you because because then if they do buy in 
mentally it's like yeah actually i do need help and i do realize that that's an area and i can see that you're an expert you're going to be able to help me and we can be collaborative here because otherwise it just becomes a transaction and and then it's a transaction it's, it's always going to be expensive because you're going to be more expensive than the local gym down the road and then you'll just say well you're too expensive it, it, what do you mean you know what do you so mean i'm too expensive I think if you ever, if you ever, this is just my, my kind of uh, take on things. I, if I ever feel like, or felt like I had to convince someone to, yeah, yeah. to make a decision, I wouldn't do it. Do you know what I mean? Um, it, it doesn't but work. But we're not McDonald's, are they? See, McDonald's, you can walk in, you just take an order. Yeah. Yeah. Because you don't go into McDonald's saying, please prove to me that your burgers are brilliant. You go in and, and, and you've already made a decision. You just don't know if you're going to buy chicken nuggets or a burger or, or, or a milkshake, right? But with training or with most services, there is a process of thinking about like, is this going to be the right business for me? I want to understand what they're about. Because, because otherwise, if you're just showing people around the gym and saying, do you want us to do it? You're just taking an order. So that person's either made a decision or they haven't. But often when it comes to fitness, they're like, I don't know. If, I've, I've spent 20 years not seeing results. I knew I should have done this six months ago. I, I probably have the money. I could spend it, but why? Look, equipment's not going to win someone over because I got my kettlebells are going to look the same as anyone else's, you know. Uh, and I'm probably going to be more expensive than someone down the road, you know, who will do it cheaper. Mm. I mean, there's plenty of people who do it cheaper because that's just the market. So the question then becomes: Is like, why should we work together? What are we hoping to do collaboratively? And what's going to get you in the mindset to stick with this? Because I'm going to put a lot of effort in, you're going to put a lot of effort in. We want to know that it's not going to just be, you know, you know, just go out into the ether and, and, and you'll come out of it in six months going, oh, I haven't changed. You know, and I think my mindset is now like, what do I have to do to create that relationship right from the start where we're thinking collaboratively together in which we, there's a spirit of adventure and a spirit of possibility because otherwise we go in with that sense of anxieties we also need to address those anxieties before because they're going to get in the way later down the line if we don't know they exist, yeah. you know, because everyone says, I want to, I want to get fit for a wedding. Well, why? Well, cause I just want to show up. Okay. So well, you, where is the wedding? Oh, it's in Jamaica. Right. Okay. So how much is it going to cost you to get to Jamaica? Well, three grand. So what you're going to spend two grand on top of that. Well, yeah, I don't want to show up looking overweight. Why? Well, because I'm going to meet a bridesmaid and I haven't seen her in five years and she looks fantastic. Well, why do you care what she has to say? You know, well, it's because of, you know, I'm lacking confidence. And if you dig into it, it's like, okay, so, so that's why you want to do it. It's not just because it's nice. And it's like, okay, so why is this important? You know, why, 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 how do you think I can help you get that? And are you going to be happy doing that? Well, I think so. You know, OK, let's explore that. And then we set up that kind of sense that, OK, well, there's a reason why we're doing this. I understand some of the complexities. Actually, I don't feel attractive or I don't feel confident in my job. And I and, or I used to be like this and now I'm full of injuries and, it, and it's, ch it's changing my sense of who I am. And you're like, OK, OK, so this is what we're working with. And then the classes have a meaning. It's like, well, you're showing up now because like, this is important rather than it's just like it wouldn't be nice to look for, good for a wedding i know that most trainers maybe don't do that um but i don't have a huge client base and so i spend three days a week with people um and i also know and i know from my own experience where i think i've gone wrong in the past is is that it's difficult to keep people on point long term you know you you, you can get results very quick i mean all of us can get results really quickly but what's going to keep that person making progress so that eventually they're like our biggest advocate. They're, 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 they're shouting about us to their friends. They're shouting about their friends are saying, how the hell did you make this change? You know, and that is a magic source, which I'm not sure I've cracked. Well, I haven't cracked it yet, but I kind of want to explore the process to get someone in that mindset where that could be the outcome. I don't, I don't know if I'll be successful, but I've got to think about it. Otherwise I'm just, ticking boxes making sales whatever that's not that's not really running my business no i've got to change business you know not not just you know membership business you know you're you're doing the right thing i think in my opinion because you said you've changed your language in the way you talk but what what you've said there so there's a i'm not a neurologist but there is a neurological reason 
for why what you've said is 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 a is a better way of looking at it because if you tell someone you're for them and you're going to work and they will get the result they don't believe you unless they tell themselves that because if if you believe what you tell yourself and what everyone else tells you you don't you don't believe it unless you actually tell yourself you believe it if that makes sense so what happens is if and this is where and you'll have seen this and maybe you know this or not, but you'll have seen this, where you convince someone, like James said, if you you know if you convince someone that something's going to work for them and they're still not sure, but they go, okay, you've convinced me. There's an internal struggle, because in their own thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and actions, and everything that they're doing in their own head, they're going, actually, no, no, and you're like, yes, it will, okay, it will, no, it won't, no, it won't. Like behind, how many times do you say something in your head? compared to how many times someone will say, how many times are you going to say it doesn't work compared to how many times you yeah, say yeah, it in, yeah. in three hours a week, it does work. They're saying it the other 165 hours a yeah, week yeah. subconsciously on loop. <laughs> so so then, you get suffering, don't you? You get the yeah, resistance. You, and and then you don't see discomfort, you see pain. Exactly. And that's why. And then as a trainer, you can be like, what did I do wrong there? And then as a, as a, a client, they're like, I'm broken and this is ridiculous. I can't stick to anything. And then nobody wins. So that's yeah. the thing. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's qualifying someone straight away to say, are you ready for this? But that's not the question, is it? Because lots of people will say yes when they're not. So the thing is, if they can convince themselves why you're the person, then they've, they've not convinced themselves, but they've, they're now telling themselves, yeah, yeah, he's the person for me. Well, they're the therefore, only one therefore I believe the myself. Decision. Sorry, you can't make the decision for them, can you? Exactly, exactly. So in your in 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 your neurology, um, if you if you actually truly believe something and tell yourself you can do it, then you're gonna you're gonna do it because you're gonna start showing up. You're gonna say, right, I believe that. So now what do I need to do? I need to go and see Paul, however many times a week on these times. So therefore, I'm gonna get out of bed at that time. I'll set the alarm. I'll get out of bed at that time. I won't use snooze anymore. Um, and then it'll all be done. And then, and then I'm at work by eight o'clock or whatever. Um, and I'm going to make sure I do that for, for the next 12 weeks, at least. And then you've even more chance then afterwards of like, right, what's next? Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's really interesting. That's what I've been kind of delving into. And it's really interesting. The key and that is was after, a- that was after speaking to Mark. I mean, I didn't do this because of speaking to Mark Bennett, but just the way Mark Bennett was talking about language and how we use it yeah. and, Decision making. Yeah, if you say, I, I'll do a lot of things now when I've talked to someone and I'll say, right, tell me tell me back what I've just said. And they might say something completely different to what I meant. And I'm like, right, okay. It, that Which might be okay because it might be what they think they, or, or, or what they want to hear in their own heads, which will spur them on or whatever. But if it's not, it's like, right, okay, there's a, there's a even though we've communicated, there's still a, um, a mismatch there. So let's keep talking until we're, I was going to say on the same page until until we're in agree until we're at kind of a, a, at some sort of agreement. You know, well, you mean? know where you can help them because you can't yeah. add value everywhere, can you? You can't. Exactly. I'm not a physio. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a dietitian. I'm not a doctor. I'm um I'm personal trainer. You know, <laughs> I've got a remit, but I know how people can succeed in my narrow tunnel of expertise. You know, and yeah. I know what it takes. You know. But start, James, you've been very quiet. No, I have. I was just thinking I've been very quiet, but I've just been listening. That's uh, I've just been listening, and I, 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 um, I kind of think the way that I do things now, and and I just just been thinking, it's kind of like the way you build a relationship is the way you build any any relationship. If you think about a friendship or a romantic relationship or anything, you don't often try and get like a big commitment on the first date you know what i mean you don't often try and get like uh when you go on a say you go for a coffee with someone you're just going for a coffee and wrong and then and then you what's that that's where i went wrong with my early years (laughs) you know you might go for a coffee with someone and the way that i kind of work with people now is that i kind of i don't try and get a big commitment up front with someone i kind of try and open the door to you know almost like a coffee to begin with and then actually get to know them over a period of time and then the relationship kind of happens or doesn't happen kind of fairly um organically you know and but devil's advocate yeah 
Do you do you like your dentist? Uh, yeah, I do. Do you I've like your lawyer? Them. Do you like your surgeon? Do you have to like them to know they can do the job? You uh, don't. No, no, no. I'm not talking about no, but I'm not talking about liking someone in in terms of a a um like a relationship in terms of a friendship. I'm I'm talking about that. I suppose you you grow to. I think you do have to. I think I, no. For me, I do. If I'm engaging in personal services with someone, be it an accountant, be it a uh, a dentist, be it a, a I don't know a printer, a web designer, whatever, um, I do actually want to like them and and have some kind of relationship there with them. And, um, and do you think that that's being nice is reflects on their ability to do the job? Not necessarily, but there's there's a million accountants out there that can all probably do the same job, you know. So it's but I think I want to have a a someone that I get on with. But the, the purpose behind what I was saying initially was that I think rather than trying to get a big commitment from someone up front, uh, whether that be, you know, financially or or just a commitment of time and a commitment of working together. I now am far more relaxed in terms of letting that unfold as it goes before trying to to kind of force the relationship. I don't know. That's kind of just what I what I what I feel. Um, do you think do you think everyone's done their due diligence before they meet you? Because sometimes it's like people just, you know, it's a big step to make a commitment into their health. And sometimes they don't know how to make that step. I mean, part of I feel my job and this is just the way i run my business is that to guide them through a difficult decision making because i know that many of those people have spent two years having not made a decision and it, what mark bennett was talking about is almost like the practice of decision making is the key to progress because when you look at anyone successful it's how they handle decision making under pressure because they can go left or right and difficult or up or down or whatever it is and they don't always make good decisions, but they are good at making decisions. And then more often than not, they will end up making better decisions. And most people in their health, they've just never been guided into the process of making decisions about their health. So they're like, oh, do I do a program? Do I do this? Do, 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 do. And I kind of feel like, okay, look, there's a bit of pressure here. Here's how I'm going to help making this decision easier for you. And I'm going to be reflective and ask you questions. And I'm going to lay out how we do things. And I'll have expectations from you. And you can let me know whether or not you can live up to those expectations. And if you can, then great, we've got something to work with. So I don't surprise them with anything. But I, I want them to, to understand that they need to make the decision. Um, and ideally, you know, if I'm going to give up an hour of my time or 40 minutes or 30 minutes in a consultation, then I kind of a yes or a no is cool because then we know where we stand, you know? Yeah, I mean, I suppose I... I just whether it's right or wrong or I just don't I personally don't recognize a lot of the um a lot of the conversations that you're talking about do you know what I mean in my mm. experience now where I am in my life and and, and the business and my business uh, it's just it's just different you know I don't recognize the most people who, who come to me um now are very aware of what we do and have kind of almost made that they've almost made the decision when they walk through the door you know so it's just a very different conversation that's a mature so, business isn't it because yeah yeah so that's what that's what i'm saying it's not saying you know i'm doing it right and you're doing it wrong it's just i don't recognize a lot of the conversations that you talk about in my set for myself now um yeah so yeah that's 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 that's, that's well that's if you grow to a certain point then you're you've created a persona and a marketing angle that people have then done their uh research and they've probably gone, OK, yeah, actually, this, I like the way that, you know, uh, uh, James speaks on social media. I can see the results his clients are getting. I know X, Y, Z from his gym and they're doing really well and they've reassured me. And then they just come in and say, look, as long as he turn turn up and they're not, you know, and he doesn't put me off, then it's just like, OK, here's and I've got the budget, you know, mm. then they make the decision. Mm. And I think that that's very I mean, that's ideally where I'd like to get to, you know. Mm where you're just actually people are pre-qualifying themselves before they even turn up, mm. you know? Yeah. And then just the other thing I was going to say, just, just to know uh, we, we, we're kind of time, time uh, we, we're timing out in a minute, 
um, was what Pete was talking about. I think one of the biggest things as well um, is that uh, it's a cliche and lots of people say it, but, you know, every coach needs a coach, you know, and if you're selling coaching and, and stuff to others, then you, you kind of owe it to yourself. If you see the true value in it to engage in that yourself and, and how Pete is now, you know, engaged in this programming and this coaching. And I, I had a, I had a, an afternoon with Chet yesterday, uh, former guest of the show, um, working on stuff for myself. So I just think I really do invest in and believe in the process of coaching. And I think as, I think that's very powerful that I think all of us, uh, you know, engage in that and invest in that ourselves, um, as well, which I think is really important. Damn right. Damn right. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> anyway, uh, Oh, that's must be good, 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 uh, good yeah. chat, good catch up, yeah. And um, and I think we're back the next episode. We are with uh, Mike Sousa from uh, California, so uh, we'll have Mike on um, uh, from uh, the Brick House, isn't it? Is it Brick House? Yes, oh, Brick House. Yeah, Brick House in California. Uh, so we'll be with with with, uh, with Mike. Um, but thank you so much, uh, Paul and Pete, for uh, for that kind of breather catch up episode. Um, thank you to all of our uh, listeners, uh, both new and uh, and old. Um, we really do appreciate you listening and watching uh, every week. Uh, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a review. I've been told you can leave a review on Spotify as well now, um, as well as iTunes. Uh, so please do do that. And if you'd like to join the Facebook group, just go into groups on Facebook and search for Health Oddity and click on join, and then we will let you in there. So uh, say goodbye, Mr. Peter Lance. Goodbye. Say Mr. goodbye, Peter. Mr. Paul Bassett. Goodbye. <laughs> and I will say goodbye. We'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Health Odyssey with Peter Lant, Paul Bassett, and James St. Pierre. To get your regular fix of hype-free health, you can subscribe and leave a review wherever you get your favorite podcasts. You can find out more on today's and other topics at healthodyssey.com or find us on Facebook or Instagram by searching for Health Odyssey.